it's easy to mock models as well, particularly in the wake of the financial crisis and and so on. But 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 you resist that temptation. They are they have their place and they are a tool, but you need to use them. Appropriately. You need to use them skillfully and with judgment. And you do not want, as it were, to believe models. You know, we start by talking about the financial crisis. And David Vinia, who's then CFO of Goldman Sachs, said we've experienced 25 standard deviation events several days in a row. Well, if you know anything about statistics, you know that that's simply impossible. And what he meant and all he could have meant was that it was impossible within the context of the Goldman Sachs model. And there's a big problem here about using models for risk management in the way in which they were doing, because the database on which their model was calibrated was necessarily a time in which banks didn't go bust, and therefore predicting from that when banks will go bust Hmm. is uh, more than slightly dicey, as it proved. I guess there's a is, is a big cultural element here. So in the banks, you know, everyone wants no one wants to say anything that they can't back up with, you know, an unshakable case and data. But if you're operating in a domain of sufficient complexity, if that's how you operate, you end up looking silly in the long term. And so it's a, cult, a cultural problem as much as anything. It is, and people wanted to believe this was okay. And I can certainly remember talking to people in banks before the crisis, and there were good reasons for worrying about the, the build-up of complex interacting securities. And a lot of people inside banks, as well as outside, mm. were worried by, by that. But you were told very firmly that we have these very smart right. guys doing models who take care of all this. I was pretty skeptical about that because mm. I had a better idea than most people what the models actually mm. were. Uh, but people wanted to believe it. It was hard mm. work to understand it. And nobody wanted to upset upset the boat. Yeah. And more than that, I know some people in these banks who warned and worried about all of this. Mm. And they were told, you know, well, if you can tell me when and how it's going to blow up, we'll respond to that. Yeah, they're throwing certainty back can't. in their yeah. face then, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. And that speaks to the uh, uh, kind of a broader issue, I think, which is one of a, a lack of trust in society and this phenomenon of a, a failure of trust and respect of experts. And I did wonder, reading your book, if, if one of the reasons that, that expertise um, has, has suffered this failure is because so many disciplines have failed to appreciate the nature of, of radical uncertainty. And so when you get into a situation of s- downwardly spiralling mistrust, um, experts then become defensive and will only give you a recommendation that is uh, um, uh, methodologically explainable rather than yeah. based on their... That goes back to what I was describing about the ways in which people use models. Yeah. It's to justify decisions yeah. which you've actually made. But how do we get out of that? Another grant. Um, I, think, I think people, we, we just need to learn more about what you can and can't do with models. And uh, a lot of the problem here is people just taking these models too seriously, as Mm. Vineyard and the financial crisis illustrates. Or you get, you know, we've been reading about HS2, the high-speed train, and the papers. Topical, yeah. Yeah, topical. Um, That projects like that are assessed using a wildly complex template. There's a treasury green book on how you do project appraisal. And there's a specific group of transport models called WebTag. And you have to put projects, including that one, through these these models. Now, um, if you look up the website of that, you'll discover that WebTag gives you now all the numbers you might possibly want to arrive at an answer. If you want to know how many passengers there will be in a car on weekday evenings between 4 and 7 in 2036, there's a number for that. (laughs) If you want to know what Britain's growth rate will be in 2080, there's a number for that. Oh, you're kidding. 
<laughs> we don't know. <laughs> and we're just making up all the things we don't know in order to create a kind of pretense of knowledge. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't be using models at all. Mm. How should you use models in relation to a project like that? Well, uh, one question is, what is it worth to people to have a journey that's half an hour faster? And you have quite a lot of places in the world where you actually have that option. You can either get a high-speed train or a slower train. In fact, right now, you can either go a slower route to Birmingham mm. through the Chilterns or the fast route on the West Coast Main Line from Euston at a, at a higher price in the main. Uh, do you look at data like that? No, you don't. But that's obviously key parameter to the whole assessment of the project. And you start by identifying a parameter like that and then you do some work on what it is. The second question is, if you speed up transport links between a provincial city and the capital, does that promote growth in the provincial city or drain some of the growth towards mm. the capital? Well, there's a lot of evidence of that from other countries, and it's actually not very encouraging right. for this kind of project. Yeah. But this is how you, you really should be using models. You use rather simple models to identify what are the things that matter. It's a way of organizing your thought. And then having identified the things that really matter, uh, you put a lot of research into doing that. And all of that is specific to the project. Obviously, a road improvement would be very different from a high-speed train and so on in that approach. It's, it's very specific, and it also requires quite a lot of experience and judgment to do that kind of exercise well. Whereas the thing about a, a template like WebTag is you can give this to a junior analyst and say, mm. go and crunch the numbers. Yeah. And, of course, there's a large business of doing exactly 